Ulysses by James Joyce Episode 3 Proteus Read by Alex Tamulus Ineluctable modality of the visible At least that if no more Thaw through my eyes Signatures of all things I am here to read Sea spawn and sea rack The nearing tide That rusty boot Snot green Blue silver Rust Colored signs Limits of the diaphane but he adds, in bodies. Then he was aware of them bodies, but four of them colored. How? By knocking his sconce against them. Sure, go easy. Bald he was in a millionaire. Maestro di color che sano. Limit of the diaphane in. Why in? Diaphane and diaphane. If you can put your five fingers through it, it is a gate, if not a door. Shut your eyes and see. Stephen closed his eyes to hear his boots crush crackling rack and shelf. You are walking through it, howsomever. I am, a stride at a time, a very short space of time through very short times of space. Five, six, the Nahainanda. Exactly. And that is the ineluctable modality of the audible. Open your eyes. No, Jesus, if I fell over a cliff that beetles o'er his base, fell through the Nibbanainanda ineluctably. I'm getting on nicely in the dark. My ash sword hangs at my side. Tap with it. They do. My two feet in his boots are at the end of his legs. Nibbanainanda. Sound solid. Made by the mallet of Los Demiurgos. Am I walking into eternity along Sandy Mount Strand? Crush, crack, crick, crick. Wild sea money. How many deezy cans them? Uh, won't you come to Sandy Mount, Madeline the mare? Rhythm begins, you see. I hear a catalectic tetrameter of I am's marching. No, a gallop. The line the mare. Open your eyes now. I will. One moment. Has all vanished since? If I open and am forever in the black, a diaphane. Basta. I will see if I can see. See now. There, all the time, without you. And ever shall be. World without end. They came down the steps from Leahy's Terrace prudently. Frau Wenzima. And down the shelving shore, flabbly their splayed feet, sinking in the silted sand, like me, like algae, coming down to our mighty mother. Number one swung lurdly her midwife's bag, the others gamp poked in the beach. From the liberties, out for the day. Mrs. Florence McCabe, relict of the late Pat McCabe, deeply lamented of Bride Street. One of her sisterhood lugged me, squealing into life, Creation from nothing. What has she in the bag? A misbirth with a trailing navel cord, hushed in ruddy wool. The cords of all link back, strand and twining cable of all flesh. That is why, mystic monks, will you be as gods? Gaze in your umphalus. Hello, Kinch here. Put me on Edenville. Aleph, Alpha, not, not, one. Spouse and helpmate of Adam Cadman. Heva, naked Eve. She had no navel. Gaze, belly without blemish, bulging big, a buckler of taut vellum. No, white heaped corn, orient and immortal, standing from everlasting to everlasting, womb of sin. Wombed in sin, darkness I was too, Made, not begotten. By them, the men with my voice and my eyes, and a ghost woman with ashes on her breath. They clasped and sundered, did the coupler's will. From before the ages, he willed me, and now may not will me away or ever. A lex eterna stays about him. Is that then the divine substance wherein father and son are consubstantial? 
What are sportier areas to try conclusions? Warring his life long on the con trans magnificent Jew bang tensiality. Ill starred heresiarch. In the Greek water closet, he breathed his last euthanasia. With beaded mitre and with crozier stalled upon his throne, widower of a widowed sea. With upstiffed amophorian, with clotted hinder parts. Airs romped around him, nipping in eager airs. They're coming, waves. The white-maned seahorses, champing, bright wind bridled, the steeds of Mananan. I mustn't forget his letter for the press. And after? The ship. Half twelve. By the way, go easy with that money, like a good young imbecile. Yes, I must. His pace slackened. Here. Am I going to Aunt Sarah's or not? My consubstantial father's voice. Did you see anything of your artist brother Stephen lately? No. Sure, he's not down in Strasburg Terrace with his Aunt Sally. Couldn't he fly a bit higher than that, eh? And, 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 and tell us Stephen. How is Uncle Si? Oh, weeping God, the things I married into. The boys up in the hayloft. The drunken little cot's drawer and his brother, the cornet player. Highly respectable gondoliers. And skew-eyed Walter serving his father, no less. Sir, yes sir, no sir. Jesus wept, and no wonder by Christ. I pull the wheezy bell of their shuttered cottage, and wait. They take me for a don, peer out from a coin of vantage. It's Stephen, sir. Let him in. Let Stephen in. A bolt drawn back, and Walter welcomes me. We thought you were someone else. In his broad bed, Uncle Richie, pillowed and blanketed, extends over the hillock of his knees a sturdy forearm. Clean-chested, he has washed the upper moiety. Moral, nephew. He lays aside the lapboard, whereon he drafts his bills of costs for the eyes of Master Goff and Master Chaplin Tandy, filing consents and common searches in a writ of Ducas Decum, a bog oak frame over his bald head. Wilde's requiescat. The drone of his misleading whistle brings Walter back. Yes, sir. Malt for Richie and Stephen. Tell mother. Where is she? Bathing Chrissy, sir. Papa's little bad pal. Lump of love. No, Uncle Richie. Call me Richie. Damn your lithia water. It lowers. Whiskey. Uncle Richie, really. Sit down, or by the law, Harry, I'll knock you down. Walter squints vainly for a chair. He has nothing to sit down on, sir. He has nowhere to put it, you mug. Bring in your Chippendale chair. Would you like a bite or something? None of your damn la dee da air here. The rich of a rasher fried with a heron? Sure, so much the better. We have nothing in the house but backache pills. Alerta! He drones bars of Fernando's Aria di Sortita, the grandest number, Stephen, in the whole opera. Listen. His tuneful whistle sounds again, finely shaded with rushes of the air, his fists big drumming on his padded knees. This wind is sweeter. Houses of decay, mine, his, and all. You told the Clongo's gentry you had an uncle a judge and an uncle a general in the army. Come out of them, Stephen. Beauty is not there, nor in the stagnant bay of Marsh's library, where you read the fading prophecies of Joachim Abbas. For whom? The hundred-headed rabble of the cathedral close. A hater of his kind ran from them to the wood of madness his mane foaming in the moon, his eyeballs stars. Hoenum, horse nostrilled, the oval equine faces, Temple, Buck Mulligan, Foxy Campbell, Lantern Joss, Abba's father, Furious Dean, what offense laid fire to their brains? Path, 
the scanda calve ut nenimium de calveris. A garland of gray hair on his comminated head. See him, me, clambering down to the foot pace. The scanda, clutching a monstrance, basilisk guide. Get down, bald pole. A choir gives back menace and echo, assisting about the altar's horns, the snorted Latin of jack priests moving burly in their albs, tonsured and oiled and gelded, fat with the fat of kidneys of wheat. And at the same instant, perhaps a priest round the corner is elevating it, drang, drang, and two streets of another locking it into a pix. Dring a drang. And in a lady chapel, another taking housel, all to his own cheek. Dring, dring, down, up, forward, back. Then Occam thought of that invincible doctor. A misty English morning, the imp hypostasis tickled his brain. Bringing his host down and kneeling, he heard twine with his second bell, the first bell, and the transept. He is lifting his, and rising, heard, now I am lifting, there are two bells. He's kneeling, twang and diphthong. Cousin Stephen, you will never be a saint. Isle of Saints, you were awfully holy, weren't you? You prayed to the Blessed Virgin that you might not have a red nose. You prayed to the devil in Serpentine Avenue that the fubsy widow in front might lift her clothes still more from the wet street. Oh, si, certo. Sell your soul for that. Do. Dyed rags spin round a squaw. More tell me, more still. On the top of the house, tram alone, crying to the rain. Naked women. What about that, eh? What about what? What else were they invented for? Reading two pages apiece of seven books every night, eh? I was young. You bowed to yourself in the mirror, stepping forward to applause earnestly, striking face. Hooray for the goddamn idiot. Hooray! No one saw. Tell no one. Books you were going to write with letters for titles. Have you read his F? Oh, yes, but I prefer Q. Yes, but W is wonderful. Oh, yes, W. Remember your epiphanies on green oval leaves? Deeply deep. Copies to be sent if you died to all the great libraries of the world, including Alexandria? Someone was to read them. There, after a few thousand years. Uh, Maramam Vantara, Pico de la Mirandola, like, I, very like a whale. When one reads these strange pages of one long gone, one feels that one is at one with one who once. The grainy sand had gone from under his feet. His boots trod again a damp, crackling mast, razor shells, squeaking pebbles. That on the unnumbered pebbles beats, wood sieved by the shipworm, lost armada. Unwholesome sand flats waited to suck his treading soles, breathing upward sewage breath. He coasted them, walking warily. A porter bottle stood up, stogged to its waist in the cakey sand dough. A sentinel, Isle of Dreadful Thirst. Broken hoops on the shore, at the land a maze of dark cunning nets. Farther away, chalk scrawled back doors and on the higher beach a drying line with two crucified shirts. Ring send. Wigwams of brown steersmen and master mariners. Human shells. He halted. I have passed the way to Aunt Sarah's. Am I not going there? Seems not. No one about. It turned northeast and crossed the firmer sand towards the pigeon house. Que vous avez mis dans cette fichue position? Slipigeon, Joseph. Patris, home on furlough, lapped warm milk with me in the bar McMahon. Son of the wild goose, Kevin Egan of Paris. My father's a bird. He lapped the sweet, less show with pink, young tongue, plump bunny's face. Lap, lapin. He hopes to win in the Gros Lot. About the nature of women, he read in Michelet, but he must send me La Vie de Jésus by Mr. Leo Taxil. Lent it to his friend. 
Stordant, vous savez, moi, je suis socialiste. Je ne crois pas en l'existence de Dieu. faut pas le dire à mon père. Il croit Mon père, oui. Schluss, he laps. My Latin quarter hat. God, we simply must dress the character. I want puce gloves. You were a student, weren't you? Avoiding the other devil's name. Paysayen, you know, physico, chimico, et naturel. Uh-huh. Eating your groats worth of muensve, flesh pots of Egypt, elbowed by belching cabmen. Just say in the most natural tone. When I was in Paris, Boulmiche, Boulevard Saint-Michel, I used to. Yes, used to carry punch tickets to prove an alibi if they arrested you for murder somewhere. Justice. On the night of the 17th of February 1904, the prisoner was seen by two witnesses. Other fellow did it. Other me. Hat, tie, overcoat, nose. Lui, smoi. You seem to have enjoyed yourself. Proudly walking. Whom were you trying to walk like? Forget. A dispossessed. With mother's money order, eight shillings. The banging door of the post office slammed in your face by the usher. Hunger toothache. Encore deux minutes. Le clock. Musket. Fermé. Hire dog. Shoot him to bloody bits with a bang shotgun. Bits man spattered walls, all brass buttons. Bits all... Kerk clack in place, clack back. Not hurt? Oh, that's all right. Shake hands. See what I meant? See? Oh, that's all right. Shake a shake. Oh, that's all only all right. You were going to do wonders. What? Missionary to Europe after fiery Columbanus. Fiacre and Scotus on their creepy stools in heaven spilt from their pine pots. Loud Latin laughing. Euge, euge. Pretending to speak broken English as you dragged your valise, porter threepence, across the slimy pier at New Haven. Come on, rich booty you brought back. Le tutu, five tattered numbers of pantalon blanc et culotte rouge, a blue French telegram, curiosity to show. Mother dying. Come home, father. The end thinks you killed your mother. That's why she won't. Then here's a health to Mulligan's end, and I will tell you the reason why. She always kept things decent in the Hannigan family. His feet marched in sudden proud rhythm over the sand furrows, along by the boulders of the south wall. He stared at them proudly, piled stone mammoth skulls, gold light on sea, on sand, on boulders. The sun is there, the slender trees, The lemon houses. Paris, raw, Paris, rawly waking, crude sunlight on her lemon streets. Moist pith of farls of bread, the frog green wormwood, her matin incense, court the air. Belluomo rises from the bed of his wife's lover's wife. The kerchiefed housewife is a stir, a saucer of acetic acid in her hands. In Rodos, Yvonne, and Madeleine, new make their tumbled beauties, shattering with gold teeth, chausson of pastry, their mouths yellowed with the pu of flan breton. Faces of Paris men go by, their well-pleased pleasers, curled conquistadores. Noom slumbers. Kevin Egan rolls gunpowder cigarettes, through fingers smeared with printer's ink, sipping his green fairy as Patris his white. About us, gobblers fork spice beans down their gullets. On the misette, a jet of coffee steam from the burnished cauldron. She serves me at his back. Il est Irlandais. Hollandais? Non fromage. Dos Irlandais, nous, Irlande, vous savez? Ah, oh, oui. She thought he wanted a cheese Hollandais. Your postprandial. Do you know that word? Postprandial? There was a fellow I knew once in Barcelona, queer fellow, used to call it his postprandial. Well, slant. Around the slabbed tables, the tangle of wine brats and grumbling gorges. His breath hangs over our sauce stained plates, the green fairy's fang thrusting between his lips. Of Ireland. 
the Dalcassians of hopes, conspiracies of Arthur Griffith now. To yoke me as his yoke fellow, our crimes are common cause. You're your father's son. I know the voice. His fustian shirt, sanguine flowered, trembles its Spanish tassels at his secrets. Mr. Drummond, famous journalist. Drummond, know what he called Queen Victoria? Old hag with the yellow teeth. Vieille grace with the Don John. Maud gone, beautiful woman, la patrie, Monsieur Millevoix, Félix Faure. Know how he died? Licentious man, the frocken, bonne toute faire, who rubs male nakedness in the bath at Uppsala. Moi faire, she said, to le monsieur. Not this, monsieur, I said. Most licentious custom. Bath the most private thing. I wouldn't let my brother, not even my own brother, most lascivious thing. Green eyes, I see you. Fang, I feel. Lascivious people. The blue fuse burns deadly between hands and burns clear. Loose tobacco shreds catch fire. A flame and acrid smoke light our corner. Raw face bones under his peep of day boy's hat. How the hat center got away. Authentic version. Got up as a young bride. Man, veil, orange blossoms. Drove out the road to Malahide. Did, faith, of lost leaders, the betrayed, wild escapes, disguises, clutched at, gone, not here, spurned lover. I was a strapping young gossoon at that time. I tell you, I will show you my likeness one day. I was, faith, lover, for her love, he prowled with Colonel Richard Burke, tannist of his sept under the walls of Clerkenwell, and crouching, saw a flame of vengeance hurl them upward in the fog. Shattered glass and toppling masonry, in gay Paris he hides, even of Paris, unsought by any, save by me, making his day's stations, the dingy printing case, his three taverns, the Montmartre lair, he sleeps short night in, Rue de la Goutte d'Or, Damascene with fly-blown faces of the gone, loveless, landless, wifeless. She's quite nice and comfy without her outcast man. Ma'am, in rue le coeur canary and two-buck lodgers. Peachy cheeks, a zebra skirt, frisky as a young thing's, spurned and undersparing. Tell Pat you saw me, won't you? I wanted to get poor Pat a job one time. Mon fils, soldier of France. I taught him to sing. The boys of Kilkenny are stout, roaring blades. Know that, old lay? I taught Patris that. Old Kilkenny, St. Canis, strong bow's castle on the Nore. Goes like this. Oh, oh, he takes me, napper tandy, by the hand. Oh, oh, the boys of Kilkenny. Weak, wasting hand on mine. They have forgotten Kevin Egan, not he them, remembering thee, O Sion. He had come nearer the edge of the sea, and wet sand slapped his boots. The new air greeted him, harping in wild nerves, wind of wild air of seeds of brightness. Here, I'm not walking out to the Kish lightship, Am I? He stood suddenly, his feet beginning to sink slowly in the quaking soil. Turn back. Turning, he scanned the shore south, his feet sinking again slowly in new sockets. The cold domed room of the tower waits. Through the barbicans, the shafts of light are moving ever, slowly ever, as my feet are sinking, creeping duskward over the dial floor. Blue dusk, nightfall, deep blue night. In the darkness of the dome they wait. Their pushback chairs, my obelisk valise, around a board of abandoned platters. Who to clear it? He has the key. I will not sleep there when this night comes. 
a shut door of a silent tower entombing their blind bodies. The panther sahib at his pointer. Call. No answer. He lifted his feet up from the suck and turned back by the mole of boulders. Take all. Keep all. My soul walks with me, form of forms. So in the moon's mid-watches, I paced the path above the rocks, in sable silvered, hearing Elsinore's tempting flood. The flood is following me. I can watch it flow past from here. Get back then by the pool bag road to the strand there. He climbed over the sedge and ely or weeds and sat on a stool of rock, resting his ash plant in the grike. A bloated carcass of a dog lay lolled on bladder rack. Before him, the gunwale of a boat sunk in sand. Un coche en sable, Louis Veillot called Gautier's prose. These heavy sands are language tied, and wind have silted here. And there, the stone heaps of dead builders, a warren of weasel rats. Hide gold there. Try it. You have some. Sands and stones, heavy of the past. Sir Lute's toys. Mind you, don't get one bang on the ear. I'm the bloody well gigant rolls, all them bloody well boulders. Bones from a stepping stones. Fee fa fam. I smells the blood sold the night it's men. A point. Live dog grew into sight running across the sweep of sand. Lord, is he going to attack me? Respect his liberty. He will not be master of others or their slave. I have my stick. Sit tight. From farther away, walking shoreward, across from the crested tide. Figures. Two. The two Maries. They have tucked it safe among the bulrushes. Peekaboo, I see you. No, the dog. He's running back to them. Who? Galleys of the Lachlans ran here to beach in quest of prey, their blood-beak prows riding low on a molten pewter surf. Dane Vikings, torques of tomahawks, a glitter on their breasts when Malachi wore the collar of gold. A school of turl-hide whales stranded in hot noon, spouting, hobbling in the shallows. Then from the starving cagework city, a horde of jerkin dwarfs, my people, with flayers' knives, running, scaling, hacking in green blubbery whale meat, famine, plague, and slaughters. Their blood is in me, their lusts, my waves. I moved among them on the frozen liffy, that I, a changeling, among the spluttering resin fires, I spoke to no one, none to me. The dog's bark ran towards him, stopped, ran back, dog of my enemy, I just simply stood pale, silent, bayed about, terriblia meditans, a primrose doublet, fortune's knave, smiled on my fear. For that are you pining, the bark of their applause? Pretenders, live their lives. The Bruce's brother, Thomas Fitzgerald, Silken Knight, Perkin Warbeck, York's false scion, in breeches of silk of white rose ivory, warner of a day, and Lambert Simnel, with a tail of Nans and Sutlers, a scullion crowned, all king's sons, paradise of pretenders, then and now. He saved men from drowning, and you shake at a curse, yelping. But the courtiers, who mocked Guido and Or San Michel, were in their own house. House of, we don't want any of your medieval abstrusiosities. Would you do what he did? A boat would be near, a life buoy, naturlich, put there for you. Would you or would you not? The man that was drowned nine days ago off Maiden's Rock. They're waiting for him now. The truth, spit it out. 
I would want to. I would try. I'm not a strong swimmer. Water cold soft. When I put my face into it, in the basin a clong goes. Can't see. Who's behind me? Out. Quickly. Quickly. Do you see the tide flowing quickly in on all sides, sheeting the lows of sands quickly, shell cocoa colored? If I had land under my feet, I want his life still to be his, mine to be mine, a drowning man. His human eyes scream to me out of horror of his death. I, with him together down, could not save her. Waters. Bitter death, lost. A woman and a man, I see her skirties, pinned up, I bet. Their dog ambled about a bank of dwindling sand, trotting, sniffing on all sides, looking for something lost in a past life. Suddenly, he made off like a bounding hare, ears flung back, chasing the shadow of a low skimming gull. The man's shrieked whistle struck his limp ears. He turned Bounded back, came nearer, trotted on twinkling shanks. On a field, tanny a buck, trippin', proper, unattired. At the lace fringe of the tide, he halted with stiff forehoofs, seaward pointed ears. His snout lifted, barked at the wave noise, herds of sea moors. They serpented towards his feet, curling, unfurling many crests every ninth breaking, plashing, from far, from farther out, waves and waves. Cockle pickers, they waited a little way in the water, and stooping, soused their bags, and lifting them again, waded out. The dog yelped, running to them, reared up and pawed them, dropping on all fours, again reared up at them with mute, bearish fawning. Unheeded, he kept by them, as they came towards the drier sand, a rag of wolf's tongue, red panting from his jaws. His speckled body ambled ahead of them and then loped off at a calf's gallop. The carcass lay on his path. He stopped, sniffed, stalked round it, brother, nosing closer, went round it, sniffling rapidly like a dog all over the dad dog's bedraggled fell. Dog skull, a dog sniff, eyes on the ground, moves to one great goal. Ah, poor dog's body. Here lies poor dog's body body. Tatters, out of that, you mongrel. The cry brought him skulking back to his master in a blunt, bootless kick sent him unscathed across a spit of sand, crouched in flight. He slunk back in a curve, doesn't see me, along by the edge of the mole, he lolloped, dawdled, smelt a rock, and from under a cocked hind leg, pissed against it. He trotted forward, and lifting his hind leg, pissed quick short at an unsmelt rock. The simple pleasures of the poor. His hind paws then scattered sand. Then his forepaws dabbled and delved, something he buried there, his grandmother. He rooted in the sand, dabbling, delving, and stopped to listen to the air, scraped up the sand again with the fury of his claws, soon ceasing. A pard, panther, got in spouse breach, vulturing the dead. After he woke me up last night, same dream? Or was it? Wait, open hallway, street of harlots. Remember, Harum om Rashid. I'm almosting it. That man led me, spoke. I was not afraid. The melon he had held against my face, smiled. Cream fruit smell. That was the rule, said. In, come, Red carpet spread, you will see who. Shouldering their bags they trudged, the red Egyptians, his blue feet out of turned-up trousers, slapped the clammy sand, a dull brick muffler strangling his unshaven neck. 
with woman's steps she followed, the ruffian and his strolling mort, spoils slung at her back, loose sand and shell grit crusted her bare feet. About her wind-draw face her hair trailed behind her lord, his helpmate, being a wasp to Romeville. When night hides her body's flaws calling under her brown shawl from an archway where dogs have mired. Her fancy man is treating two royal Dublins in old Lachlan's of black pits. Buss her, whopping rogues run lingo for, oh, my dimber, whopping Dell. A she fiend's whiteness under her rancid rags. Fawn Valley's lane that night, the tenured smells. White thy fambles, red thy gan, as thy quarn's dainty is. Couch a hogshead with me then, in the darkman's clip and kiss. Moreau's delectation Aquinas tun belly calls this, frate por scopino. Unfallen, Adam rode and not rutted. Call away, let him, thy quarn's dainty is. Language, no whit worse than his. Monk words, merry beads, jabber on their girdles. Rogue words, tough nuggets, patter in their pockets. Passing now, a side eye at my hamlet hat. If I were suddenly naked here, as I sit, I'm not. Across the sands of all the world, followed by the sun's flaming sword, to the west, tracking to evening lands. She trudges, schleps, strains, drags, tressens her load. A tide westering, moon drawn, in her wake. Tides, myriad islanded, within her. Blood not mine, oinopa ponton, a wine dark sea. Behold the handmaid of the moon. In sleep the wet sign calls her hour, bids her rise. Bride bed, child bed. Bed of death, ghost candled. Omini scado ad deveniet. He comes, pale vampire, through storm his eyes, his bat sails bloody in the sea, mouth to her mouth's kiss. Here, put a pen in that chap, will ya? My tablets. Mouth to her kiss. No, must be two of them. Glue him well. Mouth to her mouth's kiss. His lips lipped and mouthed fleshless lips of air, mouth to her womb, whom, um, all wombing tomb, his mouth molded issuing breath, unspeeched, ooey ha, roar of cataractic planets, globed, blazing, roaring, way, 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 paper. The banknotes, blast them, O oh, Deezy's ladder, here, thanking you for hospitality, tear the blank end off. Turning his back to the sun, he bent over far to a table of rock and scribbled words. That's twice I forgot to take slips from the library counter. His shadow lay over the rocks as he bent, ending. Why not endless till the farthest star? Darkly they are there behind this light, darkness shining in the brightness, delta of Cassiopeia, worlds. Me sits there with his auger's rod of ash in borrowed sandals, by day beside a livid sea, unbeheld in violet night walking beneath a rain of uncouth stars. I throw this ended shadow from me, man shape and electable, call it back. Endless, would it be mine, form of my form? Who watches me here? Who ever, anywhere, will read these written words? Signs on a white field, somewhere to someone in your fluteous voice. The good bishop of Cloyne took the veil of the temple out of his shovel hat, veil of space with colored emblems hatched on its field. Hold hard, colored on a flat, yes, that's right, Flat I see, then think, distance, near, far, flat I see, east, back. Ah, see now. Falls back suddenly, frozen in stereoscope. Click does the trick. You find my words dark, 
darkness is in our souls. Do you not think? Flutier, our souls, shame wounded by our sins, cling to us yet more, a woman to her lover clinging, the more, the more. She trusts me, her hand gentle, the long lashed eyes. Now, where the blue hell am I bringing her beyond the veil? Into the ineluctable modality of the ineluctable visuality. She, she, she. What she? The virgin at Hodges Frigus window. On Monday, looking in for one of the alphabet books you were going to write. Keen glance you gave her. Wrist through the braided jess of her sunshade. She lives in Leeson Park with a grief and kickshaws, a lady of ladders. Talk that to some else, Stevie. Uh, pick me up. Bet she wears those curse of God stays suspenders in yellow stockings darned with lumpy wool. Talk about apple dumplings. Piuttosto. Where are your wits? Touch me. Soft eyes. Soft, soft, soft hand. I'm lonely here. Oh, touch me soon now. What is that word known to all men? I am quiet here alone. Sad too. Touch, touch me. He lay back at full stretch over the sharp rocks, cramming the scribbled note and pencil into a pocket, his hat tilted down on his eyes. That is Kevin Egan's movement I made nodding for his nap. Sabbath sleep. Et vidit Deus, et erunt Valdebona. Hallo, bonjour, welcome as the flowers in May. Under its leaf he watched through, peacock twittering, lashes the southing sun. I am caught in this burning scene, pants hour the faunal noon. Among gum heavy serpent plants, milk oozing fruits, where on the tawny waters leaves lie wide. Pain is far, and no more turn aside and brood. His gaze brooded on his broad toed boots, a buck's cast offs, Nebenananda. He counted the creases of rucked leather wherein another's foot had nested warm. The foot that beat the ground in tripudium. Foot I dislove. But you were delighted when Esther Oswald's shoe went on you. Girl I knew in Paris. Tiens, quel petit pied. Staunch friend, a brother soul. Wild's love that dare not speak its name. He now will leave me. And the blame? As I am. As I am. All or not at all. In long lassos from the cock lake, the water flowed full, covering green golden lagoons of sand, rising, flowing. My ash plant will float away. I shall wait. No, they will pass on, passing, chafing against the low rocks, swirling, passing. Better get this job over quick. Listen, a four-worded wave speech. Sisu, hurs, hurs, Woos, vehement breath of waters amid sea snakes, rearing horses, rocks, in cups of rocks it slops, flop, slop, slap, pounded in barrels, and spent its speech ceases. It flows purling, widely flowing, floating foam pool, flower unfurling. Under the upswelling tide he saw the writhing weeds lift languidly and sway reluctant arms, hising up their petticoats in whispering water, swaying and upturning coy silver fronds. Day by day, night by night, lifted, flooded, and let fall. Lord, they are weary, and whisper too, they sigh. St. Ambrose heard it, sight of leaves and waves, waiting, awaiting the fullness of their times, Diebus act noctibus in urias patiens in gemiscit. To no end gathered, vainly, then released, forth flowing, wending back. Loom of the moon, 
weary too in sight of lovers, lascivious man, a naked woman shining in her courts, she draws a toil of waters. Five fathoms out there, full fathom five thy father lies. At one, he said, found drowned, high water at Dublin bar, driving before it a loose drift of rubble, fan shoals of fishes, silly shells, a corpse rising salt white from the undertow, bobbing landward, a pace, a pace, a porpoise. There he is. Hook it quick. Sunk though he be beneath the watery floor, we have him. Easy now. Bag of corpsicas sopping in foul brine. A quiver of minnows, fat of a spongy tidbit, flash through the slits of his button trouser fly. God becomes man, becomes fish, becomes barnacle goose, becomes featherbed mountain. Dead breaths, I living breathe. Tread dead dust, devour a urinous offal from all dead. Hold stark over the gunwale, he breathes upward the stench of his green grave, his leprous nose hole snoring to the sun. A sea change, this brown eyes, salt blue. Sea death, mildest of all deaths known to men. Old Father Ocean, Prix de Paris, beware of imitations. Just you give it a fair trial. We enjoyed ourselves immensely. Come, I thirst. Clouding over. No black clouds anywhere, are there? Thunderstorm. All bright he falls. Proud lightning of the intellect. Lucifer, dico, qui nescit ocasum. No, my cockle hat and staff and his my sandal shoon. Where? To evening lands. Evening will find itself. He took the hilt of his ash plant, lunging with it softly, dallying still. Yes, evening will find itself in me without me. All days make their end. By the way, next, when is it? Tuesday will be the longest day. Of all the glad new year, mother, the rum-tum, tiddly-tum, lawn Tennyson, gentleman poet, Gia, for the old hag with the yellow teeth, and Monsieur Drummond, gentleman journalist. Gia, my teeth are very bad. Why, I wonder? feel. That one is going to shells. Ought I go to a dentist, I wonder. With that money, that one. Toothless Kinch, the Superman. Why is that, I wonder? Or does it mean something, perhaps? My handkerchief. He threw it, I remember. Did I not take it up? His hand groped vainly in his pockets. No, I didn't. Better buy one. He laid the dry snot picked from his nostril on a ledge of rock, carefully. For the rest, let look who will. Behind, perhaps there is someone. He turned his face over a shoulder, rear regardant, moving through the air high spars of a three-master, her sails railed up on the cross trees, homing upstream, silent moving, a silent ship.